Welcome to week three already. Wow. We are a fifth, a fifth of the way through the course. Okay. So take what we've done and what you're going to do this week, multiply it just five more times, and then you get the end of it. But you know, I don't like to wish the semester over because fall semester is my favorite semester most because of the holidays okay i mean fall comes in which is great uh and then we have october i, I am a practitioner of halloween okay i have my halloween playlists i have my halloween books i like to read or, or genre of books i'm kind of already starting a little too soon because i've started listening to this uh my latest haunted house book uh which i love haunted house books they're for whatever reason they're my jam they're my, they're my strawberry jam okay um and uh i'm reading this book just like home oh you can't see that oh what a bummer come on computer anyways there's a home is kind of bleeding okay and it says just like home by sarah gailey and uh it, it's it's pretty it's pretty good it's pretty good even though like i said it's, it's, i shouldn't really be starting until at least september I, sorry uh every fall i buy one of those uh cinnamon brooms that they have at like kroger and ooh, i almost bought one yesterday i was like no it's still august it's not time for that yet okay but anyways so september football starts yes okay um that's probably my most over the top uh stereotypical male interest uh it that in women my wife but uh football okay football yes yeah i don't know if it's because i'm a product of the south or whatever right um i could have either been other things from the south uh you know racist whatever right i'm not but what I am from the South is a lover of football. So I'm very excited about this. September football, October Halloween, November more football and Thanksgiving, uh, which is, if you really think about it, is a bogus holiday from what it started, okay. Um, uh, but I do like the event now, the way we do it in terms of family time and having a week out from school okay and then and then uh uh the holiday season love it love all of it okay so i don't wish for the semester to be over i'm not so i'm not trying to rush us to week 16. i'm just saying that if that's you then you just have five times more what we're, we've already done and you're there there we go okay Okay, so um, let's get into what we're doing this week, okay? Um, let's pull up, here we go. Okay, so this week we are discussing the Le Petit Mort in the story of an hour. We're going over the waiter. We are gonna go over the expected work for the week. We're gonna go over some student sample work to demonstrate quality over quantity. We're gonna discuss the summer, the semester novel. Uh, I probably should talk about this last week, but I didn't. Okay, and we're gonna do it to. I'm gonna to talk to you about the adulterous woman analysis video. Okay, and I'll go over then all this work when it gets time for that. All right, so let's do this. Uh, I have my PowerPoint, which I will post. I will post this in the um. What do you call it? In the um. On Blackboard, so you'll have a PDF copy of that. Okay. All right. Um, let me switch. There we go. Okie dokie. Week three, eleven oh two. Notes on knowledge and notes on what to do. Hope you know who this picture is. Okay. Uh, if you don't know who this is, this is my aunt. This is this is her. Okay. 
All right, so this is what we're doing, which I've already shown you what we're going to do. We're going to discuss Le, the Le Petit Mort in the story of an hour. We're going to go over the waiter. We're going to go over sample work. I'm going to fix this PowerPoint. Hold on. Pause one second. Okay. Uh, there needs to be quotation marks here. And um, there needs to be quotations here. Jeez, what was I doing? Clearly, I was distracted. Okay, how can I talk about quality when the quality of this PowerPoint was crap? Okay, there we go. Again. All right, here we go. We'll go over the waiter. We're going to go over student sample work to demonstrate quality, discuss the semester novel, and go over week three work. Okay. All right, so Le Petit Mort in the story of an hour. Um, in the case you missed it, where it occurs in the short story, which this should be, you know, this should not be a spoiler. You should have read the book. I mean, read the short story. You should know it about how Miss Mallard is a young wife and she finds out that her husband was killed on a plane, not plane, on a train. And she goes upstairs and at first she's upset, but then she has this climactic moment where she starts screaming out free. And then she's really happy about the idea that she can be free without him. And then she goes downstairs and sees that he's actually alive. He was on the train. And so then she has a heart attack and dies as a result. Okay. This is written by Kate Chopin, who she is, she is, she is a great writer. Okay. And she writes a lot about women's issues in the Victorian era, which is the late 1800s in high society, which even though seems like it should be a place of, of freedom because wealth brings freedom. That's not true for women. Okay. So here's a quote from the book. Short story. Sorry. Um, there was something coming to her, and she was waiting for it, fearfully. What was it? She did not know. It was too subtle and elusive to name. But she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the sense, the color that filled the air. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize this thing that was approaching to possess her, and she was striving to beat it back with her will, as powerless as her two white slender hands would have been. When she abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under her breath. Free, free, free. The vacant stare and the look of terror that had followed it went from her eyes. They stayed keen and bright. Her pulses beat fast, and the coursing blood warmed and relaxed every inch of her body. She did not stop to ask if it were or were not a monstrous joy that held her. Okay. So you might not have caught it in this passage, okay? But what Kate Chopin, the writer, did was that she gave her main character an orgasm while she was sitting in her chair thinking about her husband, about his death, okay? And so, uh, you know, if you did the research, you know that le petit mort means orgasm, or I, I think I talked about it in my previous lectures, all right? Petit mort is an orgasm. Um, and uh, it, was it was what you call a euphemism, which is a uh, nice way of saying something because apparently orgasm is very explicit. So instead of calling it orgasm, we, we give it a French term that is sort of um, has some secrecy to it. And we call it the le petit mort, which is also kind of ironic though, because even though it's a euphemism, the translation is the little death. And a death is never really a great thing. And so one would think almost that like orgasm would be a better term than the little death, which it means the same thing, but for whatever reason, okay, people refer to it as Le Petit Mort. This has been picked up by uh, literary circles and uh, philosophers and stuff, okay? And existentialism picked it up and kind of changed that phrase, all right? Even though on the surface, it means orgasm, which is what she has here, okay? If you want a image, sort of a visual of this, okay, all you got to do is... Uh, and I'm not, this is, <laughs> so you might be like, wait, 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 where is this going? Where's my mouse? All right. Um, 
if you go to I've lost my mouth. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie When Harry Met Sally. Okay. When Harry Met Sally. And just do the cafe scene. Type in oops, cafe scene. Okay. Here, watch this. I'm not going to play it because I'm at school. Okay. Um, but in this scene, Sally is talking to her best friend, Harry. Okay, about uh, dating and their relationships. And uh, Harry is telling her about how he goes out on a date with one woman. And after he sleeps with her, he, uh, he, he breaks up. All right, he doesn't see her again. And she's upset by this and tells him that essentially he's a dog for doing that. And he says, well, I think they have a pretty good time. And she's like, well, why do you think they have a good time? And he says, well, because they have an orgasm. And she's like, well, how do you know? They're not just faking it. And he's like, I, I would know. And so then she she performs a fake, a fake Le Petit Mort in this cafe. Okay. So, you know, I think watch, you know, I think this scene, which you should just watch on your own. Um, I think uh, her, Meg Ryan's performance here is a visual illustration to what is happening to Miss Mallard here in this scene. Okay. But a difference though is that in this scene with Miss Mallard, she is screaming out free, free, free. When in films, um, when you see a passionate love scene, all right, the female character is often screaming out, yes, 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 which is what uh Meg Ryan does in her fake her character's fake impersonation of a Le Mort. Proof her point that people fake it all the time. All right, but in her fakeness, she screams out, yes, 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 okay? So this very much, the way that Kate Chopin wrote this was to illustrate this. But the irony of the time is that this went over any male reader's heads, okay? Uh, I mean, for the longest time, people didn't even believe that women could even have orgasms at all it was only a male thing okay so women who read this they knew what was happening and they were passing it off to other people be like oh my oh my god oh my god scandalous did you read this and uh but if the husbands read this a lot of them would have no idea what's really going on right because especially a hundred years ago uh men were less worried about trying to take care of their female partners okay and so the understanding of this is that the um, understanding of what her husband's death means to her life now causes her orgasm. She, you know, in, in reality, she's not actually having, she's having an existential orgasm, which is the point of the story. Okay, the story is not promoting this idea, hey, women, if you want to feel good sexually, kill your husbands. Okay, that's not what this is. This is all symbolism. Existentialists use tons of symbolism. And so she, Kate Chopin, the writer, is using this experience, of which is supposed to represent the highest, the most pleasurable experience a person can feel, okay, to relate it to the feeling of freedom, existential freedom, okay? This is not a story about sex at all. This is a story about the pleasure of living for yourself and having freedom from other people's expectations. And that is existentialism. Men are born free and society allows them to be free. But women have two selves. They have their natural self, which is free. They're born free. But then there's the, there's the society self, which is subservient. Men and women are born free in nature, but when man made society, he made women subservient. And so the most, the most perfect feeling one can have is that natural feeling of freedom, okay? Miss Mallard's little death results in the death of her subservient self. When she abandoned herself, okay, and she experiences her climactic orgasmic moment, all right, a little 
petite death, a, a little petite death, a little small death, a little death was happening. And that was her subservient self dying and leaving only her natural free self. Okay, that's it. So her little death was the death of her subservient side, her, her, her subservient self. Okay. But when Mr. Mallet returns, he also brings back society's structure. He's the man of the house. He's the head of the house. He is the dominant one, and she is subservient, okay? So when he comes back in, her free self dies, okay? Because for her to remain there, she's going to have no more. She's not going to have her freedom, okay? Socially speaking, Mr. Mallard might be a great guy. And he might allow her to be free in their household, but she's not really free. If you have to get permission from someone else to be free, then you're not really free, okay? So, you, so this is not even about Mr. Mallard. He could be a nice guy, but what he represents is the patriarchal society that makes women subservient, okay? And her subservient side just died away from her in an orgasmic moment of freedom. So all that was left was her free self. But when he returns, that represents the death of her freedom. But her subservience had also already died. So she has no more lives to live. So she dies. Okay. So that is, you know, it's a, it's an ironic kind of comical scene. Yet also it really does have some really deep implications here. Okay. And I know like there's this like taboo around sexuality and like, oh, oh my God, okay, this is like dirty and stuff, right? The O word. But it has a deep existential symbolism in that if this is the, the if this is supposed to represent the pinnacle of, of sensations and positive feelings, okay, then that is equal to, that should be what's the, the the feeling of uh, of freedom feels like okay so it's an analogy all right the little petite mort is an is a symbolic analogy of freedom okay so just so you know where we're headed with all this okay is that your papers that you'll be writing in this class are all about deep ideas theme symbolism imagery what these things represent in the literature okay there's the surface level which is easy to see and then there's the deeper level okay this course isn't about you leaving 1102 understanding existentialism and uh and uh, understanding the you know le petit mort okay this class is about you being able to dive into it an a a idea and analyze it and think about it and then expand upon it not just regurgitate it okay and so we, we we are using short stories as our mediums for deeper thinking and then writing our deeper thoughts out you are being graded on your on your ability to communicate your deeper ideas okay because in college when you are writing essays about you know you, if you take a history course you might get a, uh, a topic about you know uh, what do you think really caused this event or what do you think were the the um, outcomes uh, the deeper outcomes of this event okay and these are hypothetical questions that you have to kind of look at the data and make an analysis and interpretation okay and then communicate it so that's the kind of thing, things that we're doing in this class all right so you know the stuff that we're getting into, I'm just using all of this as a medium to to travel down the realm of deeper analysis. All right, so like the waiter, okay, the waiter. So um, you all read about the waiter, and hopefully you did. Um, before we get to the waiter, let me show. I won't pull up this uh, comic of the waiter. I have a PDF of it. All right, I found it. I just paused it, so it'd be easier. This is a comic book of the waiter, okay? And I'm just gonna summarize the points here, all right? 
Pissart, and this is Simone de Beauvoir, you know, from, from the quote, all right? And Sartre's like, I hate this lady. I don't like him. She's like, why? What, what's wrong with him? Um, he seems perfect. He comes in, he does all the right things. He, he takes the menus, okay? He has what we want. And Sartre says, well, he's trying too hard. He's, he's, he's being fake. He's play acting. He's acting like a waiter, but he's not being his real authentic self. Okay. He's performing this, this, this action with this expected results from it in order to get things from us rather than just being who he is as a person. And she's like, okay, well, what does that look like? And he says, well, let me show you. And so then Sartre starts being the waiter and he starts taking their orders. And she's like, well, we'll you're doing the same thing that he was doing. He goes, no, no, watch. And he says, hey, do you want any fresh Parmesan? And the guy's like, sure. And he, the guy's like, no, okay, no more, stop. No more, stop. No, I don't want any more. And he says, guess what? I don't have to listen to you because I have radical freedom. Radical freedom. And what does this all mean? The comic is based on Sartre's account of bad faith and being a nothingness, where he describes a waiter who is play acting at being a waiter. He says that we can imagine a waiter who have, who have a bit too stiff and mechanical because he is trying to imitate a waiter. This apparently means that the waiter is just play acting because he can't fully become a waiter, even though he tries. As a waiter, is just a sort of social function, as in taking orders, acting a certain way. As for Sartre, the waiter is denying his freedom by trying to become a sort of a machine. This puts the waiter in bad faith, because then he doesn't have faith in who he is as a person. So he, he, he pretends. Yeah, is that, that's deep right there, okay. So, current slide. Okay, so the waiter. The waiter equals a role that has been created by society or capitalism or the church, okay? It's a function. It's not natural. We're not, the waiter, there's no, any child who's born is not then deemed, oh, look at that waiter. Oh, I already know, it's a waiter. It's a waiter. No, it's a human. It's a human. So playing a role and embodying that role as who you are is not natural, okay? It's not natural. Anxiety, depression, pessimism, all this comes from trying to play a role that is not natural to oneself. When your identity comes from your job title and your function, then once that, that title goes away, you are gonna be filled with a loss of self. That's problematic in Sartre's role, okay? All right, you should never be, you, you should never feel that way because you can never be separated from yourself of, of who you are. So if something can be separated from you and you suddenly lose your identity, then you are in bad faith, okay? So like types of waiters, conformity to someone's expectation, being the best, wearing the best clothes, uh, being, uh, being athletic or being competitive, or being rich, or you know, this idea of being a smart person or a wealthy person. Okay, this is conformity. Um, following trends, keeping up with the Joneses, gender norms. This idea that oh, a man is a man's man. He likes these things. And he doesn't like those things. A woman is a woman. A woman's woman, and she likes to cook and take care of her family, and she should be with the kids and all these kind of things. Okay, gender norms. No. Christendom, okay? these Christian expectations, or any religious expectations, okay? Um, every faith puts expectations on their people to conform, to be a certain way, to be considered holy or righteous or the chosen. And none of these things um, in Sartre's eyes are natural, okay? And so, you know, someone who is like, like I, have a, I have a friend, she's a teacher, and she's gonna retire soon. And she has a lot of anxiety about retiring because she'll no longer be a teacher. And she's like, who am I? Who, who am I gonna be? And, I, and so Sartre would say, girl, you guys have bad faith in yourself. If your identity is made up through a function, then you've lost sight of who you are as a person. And that's a problem, okay? We should not try to conform ourselves to other people's expectations if it does not match who we are as people, okay? 
So uh, you're going to be talking about the adulterous woman and identifying the how Janine in the adulterous woman is performing a waiter function, okay, and how it's making her unhappy. Now, when you do your response, um, hold on one second. All right, I had to go to the door. So the work you're going to be doing uh, this week, I mean, all the work that you, you do, none of it is uh, completion. None of it is completion. None of it is like absolute answers. It's all writing. Okay. So I do want to go over, you know, the expectation of quality work okay, at the college level. Because like this week, you'll be applying the waiter ideas to the adulterous woman and writing your response. Okay. So your response is going to be graded on quality. Okay. There we go. Okay. Your grades are not pass fail or just completion grades. Okay. Um, quality work is the most important aspect of this class. We don't have a lot of assignments, so they need to be of good quality. And, you know, part of this class is not just right or wrong answers, those kind of things, but like helping push you to become a good college student. Okay. This is a core class and it's like freshman class. And the idea of freshman core classes is to get freshmen really ready for college expectations. Okay. And putting a one line answer is not already okay someone whose work shows little effort even if the answer is technically correct will still receive a lower grade than a student who has a more thoughtful and lengthier response even if i do not agree with their interpretation okay so for example some people turn in this type of responses for the finding sources assignments yes they they, they did their expectations correctly but then they did this like le petite mort means little death and symbolizes an orgasm Technically, that's correct, but the quality is no good. Okay, that gets a passing grade. A passing grade is a seventy. Actually, no, really, a passing grade is a sixty at this level. Okay, but at least it's a seventy is a C. Okay, passing grade gets a C. Doesn't get A's and B's are quality grades. Those are quality grades. Those, those are not just like a right and wrong answer. If it's if all I'm doing is giving points for right and wrong, a seventy. Okay. Um, existentialism is a philosophy, is a philosophical theory about individuals being able to make meaningful decisions. Okay. All right. Technically that's not incorrect, but that's not a quality response. So you don't get a quality grade. Okay. This right here is the length of one response. This is someone's actual response. They wrote, Le Mort was a very popular term in the 18th and 19th centuries. It had many different meanings. Le Petit Mort symbolizes a short period in time when a person is unaware, unconscious, almost like when someone faints or is dizzy. It's hard for the person to focus. Le Petit Mort had a sexual meaning as well, referred to as a sexual release by physicians during medieval times. Le Petit Mort also was used in, in a lot of different literature, for example. The Canterbury Tales by Chaucer and many plays done by Shakespeare. And lastly, Le Petit Mort had a psychological meaning that many modern philosophers describe as a psychological loss after the sexual act of an orgasm. And it's since the person loses a part of themselves. Okay, good. So like, this is a longer response, okay? So this is like a passing grade, which is a 60 to a 70. And this is a quality grade, which is a B to an A. There's some grammatical errors. There's some uh, periods that aren't there run-ons okay um but the effort put into this is much more than the effort put into this okay and this is a double space as it should be okay that's beside the fact so this receives a quality grade which is an a and a b okay b or a's are quality grades c's and d's are just ah, that's correct okay so make sure that that you earn your grade Okay, college. There's two types of grading for college. There's pass and fail, and then there is quality grades. Okay, you can get passing grades in college and graduate college, but you might not go into graduate school because the GPA GPA shows quality. Okay, um, pass or fail, you passed it, so you know. Getting a C in a class is passing the class. You can make C's in all of your classes, graduate college with a 2.0. You there you go. You you have your college degree and you can go to go to get a job. 
many many jobs don't ask you, well, what is your what is your, what was your GPA? Okay, but like if you want to go to graduate school, the GPA matters, and the GPA says it shows not just how intelligent the person is, but what kind of quality student is that person. Okay, so if you want a good GPA that shows that you're a good quality student, then you need to put more quality into your work and not just try to get a right or wrong answer, but try to get a high quality answer. Try to produce one. Okay. If you have any questions, email me. Let me know. Oops. All right. Finally, last thing. You have to read a novel for the semester. Okay. Uh, this is week going to week three, so you have about 13 weeks to read a novel. Okay. Um, which some of you might, might be like, "What? That's, that's not enough time." But if you find a novel, and uh, you know, 13 times seven is uh 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 like somewhere like 90 days okay 90 days to read a 300 um page book okay is like five pages a day okay so it's doable you need to find a novel to read you need to select a novel to read this semester you don't have to pick one of these books someone's gonna be like do i have to pick the books that are on the powerpoint and i'm gonna say did you listen to the powerpoint Maybe yeah, listen to it, okay? Because in the PowerPoint, it says, no, you don't pick one of the books here. You can, okay? You have to pick a novel to read because essay three, the literary analysis essay, will be about the novel that you read, okay? You cannot pick a book. You cannot uh, pick a book that is commonly read in school. Shakespeare, The Great Gatsby, Of My Men, The Odyssey, et cetera. I'm a high school teacher. I know what books are commonly taught in high school. You cannot pick books that are commonly taught in high school, okay? Um, they sh I prefer if there were more modern books, okay? Uh, but uh, the books that you're choosing, um, there should not be, they should not be, like I said, overly popular. I mean, they can be bestsellers. I don't care if they're bestsellers at all. Um, but I do not want the ones that are no normally read the classics in, in 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 high school okay if you pick a book and i'm like and it's like you know um what do you call it a fair to arms nope no hemingway too well known you read too much okay don't do that um if you are not sure what book if, if the book that you picked is a is suitable for the class you can email me the book and i will say yes or no but here's some requirements. It must be a narrative. It has to tell a story. It's, it's not informational text. All right. It's not short. It's not a book of short stories. It has to tell one long story, one central story. It can be nonfiction as long as it's telling the story, like the book um, Lone Survivor. Okay. I like, I like a lot of military books. Lone Survivor tells one story about the guy who's a lone survivor and how everybody in, in his group ends up being killed in shootouts, okay? And how the town hides him and he escapes down a river. Okay? It's a nonfiction book, but it's told like a novel. So, that, so it needs to be like a novel, okay? All right, so these are some books that are fantastic books. You could read these books, okay? Um, and like, uh, I don't want young adult books. They're, they're, they're a little bit too shallow on deep thoughts. Like, I don't want, like, Harry Potter. You know, I love Harry Potter, but no Harry Potter, no Twilight, okay? I don't want young young adult novels, all right? Um, Where the Crawdads Sing, that's a great book. You can do that one. Um, there's tons of books out there. If you need a suggestion, email me. If you want to make sure the book that you want to read is suitable, email me. It's fine. But everyone needs to read a book. Okay, preferably a more contemporary book before we get to essay three. Okay, you gotta do it. This week, you are watching the lecture on the adulterous woman, all right, uh, which is important for essay one, which is going to be a compare contrast analysis. Actually, I don't know if it's gonna be over just those two. It might be, uh, essay one's actually, you're gonna be able to choose any of these. Uh, so um, essay one is going to be a, a, a uh, an analysis of different um, stories. Okay, so ignore this compare contrast analysis of story right now. 
but you could write about the Dutch, the Dutch woman in your essay one. You are going to, so watch the lecture on it. You're going to read Hills Like White Elephants. You're going to watch the analysis of Hills Like White Elephants. Uh, you're going to read The Sea Change and watch the analysis of that story as well. And you're going to complete the Sea Change assignment. Okay? Which is just, which one do you like better? Sea Change or Hills Like White Elephants. And all of this can be found here. Let's see, the bell's going to ring in four minutes. I'm going to try to get this done. Let's see. Uh, click our page. Go to go to lessons. Okay. Lesson three. Theme, style, and tone. Feels like white elephants. Okay. Read it. The sea change. Read it. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. And then watch the the uh, the lectures on those. You should have read the Doctor's Woman last week. I mean, I, I was for some reason thinking that you're reading that this week. Um, so uh, I go over how that story is connected with the story of an hour. OK. And Janine's Le Petit Mort that she has on the rooftop. Um, but the ending is different. The stories are very similar in terms of a woman's experience. All right, in the roles that she plays, but in the sort of an hour, Mallard dies, and the George's woman, she moves on with her life. Okay. All right, great. So you're going to read the sea change, and you're going to do these questions. Okay, quality responses. You're going to read Hills at White Elephants. I didn't mean, click that, and you're going to explain these things. Um. Honestly, look, um, I go through the Hills of White Elephants and the Sea Change uh, with with uh, pretty extensively, okay? So you can kind of read through them first before and, and then watch the lectures if you want to, okay? Uh, or you can have the lecture up, read some of the story, and then watch my discussion of that part. Then pause the lecture, read some more, and then watch what I just said about that, you know? That, I think, would be good. You're kind of doing it at the same time. You're reading a little bit and then watching a little bit of the lecture. Reading a little bit and then watching some of the lecture. Okay? Um, I have not... Um, this is Tuesday that I'm, I'm making this... this uh, making this... Uh, recording this lecture, okay? So, it will say week three lectures. All right, it'll have all those lectures up. And then, under lectures here, I'm going to have a week three um i'll have a week three file set up so you'll see that okay all right if you have any questions you know what to do let me know okay if i uh bet through too much of this went too fast whatever um and you need some clarifications email me and say hey mr Barnes, i watched the lecture you know but i was just a little confused by this can you give me some more information about this blah 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 and then i will just preface it by saying, I watched the lecture and now I have this question, okay? Some people post questions as if they didn't watch the lecture. So then I'm like, watch the lecture. And they reply back and say, well, I did watch the lecture. I just have an additional question. So then I feel like a jerk because the way you initially asked sounded like you didn't watch the lecture. So start your, S, your emails with, Mr. Byers, I watched the lecture and now I have this question. Okay? All right, everyone, I hope you have a great week, and I hope you had a previously good week, and I hope you continue to have a good experience. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be in touch.